I want to go across to Dr. Ghosh first. Looking at it from your lens and given what you've seen internationally, how significant is the Chandrayaan 3 in a global context? For India, it means the world. You know, or everyone watching at this time itching and wanting for Chandrayaan 3 to succeed. But in the, in the community of space scientists, you know, where does it stand in a global order? Well, um, it's always exciting. Uh, if see, in the global community of scientists, there are no country, country boundaries. So it's always exciting if another country joins in and shares this marvelous uh, exploration um, miracle. Uh, so why it is so important to India is if this soft landing capacity is achieved, uh, India could go to an asteroid, India go to, can go to Mars. So it opens up a whole new platform of, um, of op opportunities. Global context, um, why it's important, Unlike the 1960s, NASA is headed back to the moon this time to perhaps um, build a more permanent base. Um, private players are interested, like Jeff Bezos' Blue Origins. Um, China is interested, and they want to go back in 2030. So I think there's a global interest in going back to the moon and settling What is sparking so this global interest in wanting to build more uh, permanent structures, having uh, missions there all the time? Because for a very long time, it seemed to have lost interest. Why is it that the moon is suddenly so much in interest in the United States as is the case in China and elsewhere? Very good question. So I, I think what happened is man went to the moon in the 60s, 70s. Then they said, let's go to Mars. And then I think over the 20, next 20 years, we realized that Mars is very far away and very expensive. To put it in context, it's about 200 to 300 million miles away. The moon can be reached in three days. So if you were to try to make a technology demonstration, it makes much more sense to go to the moon. And then we had this discovery of ice at the South Pole, which makes the human mission much more realistic because um, ice can help um, um, with water for human use, for oxygen for human use, also oxygen for the return journey. So I think it was a back and forth. So NASA in 2003 wanted to go to the moon. In, in the Obama administration, they said, well, let's go to Mars and again, uh, with President Trump, we were back to the moon again because that was the... For the larger quest of, uh, of establishing a permanent base on the south side of the moon, what role do you think Chandrayaan-3 can play in that global quest for a permanent destination? Because this, if everything goes well, lands on the south side of the moon. So what kind of exploration will Chandrayaan-3 be doing which could be useful in a global context? Well, it could map out the distribution of ice. Um, and, 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 but then the larger hauling of how do you extract that ice into water and how do you deliver large payloads to the moon to make structures. For that, you need very large um, launch vehicles, which um, the US has and which um, China still doesn't have, but might have. So the Starship built, being built by Elon Musk uh, can carry maybe uh, 30 times more than the GSLV. So you need to carry huge structures to the moon. Say you're trying, building, trying to build like an international space station on the moon. So, so, so there I think the lar larger spaceships, the launch vehicles would be required. Okay, Ramesh Chandra Kapoor, uh, you know, given your seat as a professor at the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, uh, could you give a sense of why this mission is important for India, from the perspective of India's space odyssey, the missions that we've had in the past, the lessons from Chandrayaan 2 and what's changed between 2 and 3 to ensure that the last piece which we missed out on the last time, you know, we're able to nail this time round. Well, uh, today's news has been very uh, encouraging and so far the journey has been really good. And obviously, if we are having a science mission to the moon, so there are reasons to, uh, for that. One of the main reasons is the, that ISRO is going to demonstrate its uh, technical prowess, technical capability, and reaching payloads to the moon and landing them softly on the surface. Soft landing is a very, very difficult thing, and ISRO is going to demonstrate we very much hope that it's going to uh, happen uh, the desired way and uh, it will establish those uh, progress. And obviously for future programs, 
ISRO uh, is already uh, being acquired by different space agencies and it has worked in collaboration with them and, uh, and also uh, based satellites of many countries uh, in lower harbor it's already been higher all of this. So South Pole of the Moon, because Chandrayaan 1 actually found uh, presence of ice uh, in 2008 and then the whole world woke up to this and uh, that was a wonderful discovery and, and it's also considered as one of the uh, most important discoveries in the solar system uh, in, in, in these uh, three decades. So, uh, oxygen at Dr. Ghosh has already uh, pointed out that water means uh, for human consumption and also for, as a source of oxygen and hydrogen for uh, this uh, travel and for, as uh, fuel for the uh, future. Okay, uh, Dr. Prishri Kumar, you've been uh, a research scientist with NASA, you've been the group director of the ISRO satellite center. So you've seen both ISRO and NASA and give our viewers a contextual comparison between the work being done at this moment at ISRO with much lesser budgets than the work that NASA does and, and explain also the significance of a soft landing and how do scientists plan and practice for a soft landing on the moon without actually being able to do so. Okay. Um, I mean, going to the moon is, uh, is no joke. It's a very challenging task. Uh, ISRO has taken this up quite seriously. The current effort at Chandrayaan-3 uh, has taken a lot of uh, additional precautions compared to our earlier attempt. And so there is large confidence that this actually will happen. So spend a moment on that, delve into that. Without getting too technical and getting caught in scientific jargon, what's changed between Chandrayaan-2 and 3, which makes you more confident that Chandrayaan-3 might be successful? There was substantial amount of time to do tests on the system, tests of sensors which are critical for landing, tests of sensors which are critical for guiding the system to the right spot that we want to do. Additional elements have been strengthened, like the legs of the of the lander. Additional fuel is available now, and so overall, better prepared. A lot of testing and repeated reviews that uh, you know, making sure every node stone is left unturned. And in that sense, I think much better prepared. Explain now, the significance of a soft landing uh, in comparison with a normal landing. Why is a soft landing technically much tougher to achieve? Well, soft landing means you're landing at a level at a rate of about uh, two to three meters per second at the final phase of it, which means substantially cutting the velocity of this extremely fast moving spacecraft to a level where systems on board are sustained and something very critical in, in the long run, if you really want humans to land on the moon, you really have to learn to soft land on it. So soft landing is essential for lunar exploration, both for machines as well as for humans. So that is that is why Chandrayaan 3's achievement is going to be seen in an entirely different light uh, if we do the soft landing as required. 